be only one podcast, and may it be the princes of the universe. Hi, folks. I'm Matt. And I'm Wes. Yeah, yeah. Welcome back. Excellent. Hi. Is everything plugged in? That, yeah. <laughs> I want to talk about cartoons. Uh, this is, I don't know what we would call this series, but the series where we analyze things that were great back in the day, are they still great today? Usually the answer is no. I think it's called therapy. <laughs> Perhaps. Um, last week, we went on a great tangent. Previously. Previously on Prince of the Universe. We talked about good old Saturday mornings, eating a bowl of cereal, talked about cereals, sugary cereals, plain cereals. Did you at least put honey on your Cheerios? I did not. You know, odd thing, I love honey on regular Cheerios. I despise Honey Nut Cheerios. I don't know why. Sounds weird. Yeah. But... Um, Anyway, talked about all the good feelings, and I'll, we'll, I'll rehash, because uh, on Saturday Morning Sam Flange, one of our very earliest episodes was this topic. Okay. Um, the reason I wanted to kind of bring it back a little bit, because some of my thoughts have changed, and we've never heard your thoughts on this. Uh, but obviously, cartoons back in the day were very special to us for certain reasons. It was something you got to do probably for a full hour or so after you got out of school. Or there was Saturday this afternoon, mornings. That after those afternoon cartoons, paper one or two. Yep. You know, and then you also had your Saturday mornings, which was the Super Bowl. Right. Right. Your big block. And you had you only had three. You had ABC, CBS, and NBC. All of them had a Saturday morning cartoon lineup. I mean, that started at six in the morning. Yep. It's like Black Friday. This thing started at six, goes all the way to ten. What was the first cartoon that you watched on Saturday mornings? Okay. First cartoon I watched was Rocky Bullwinkle. I was going to say the same. That. Yours was the same. Yep. Um, then I it, almost wondered, was there anything else other than Rocky Bullwinkle? Maybe Bull not, now that you mention it. But we were up at 6 to get our you, – you got up. You got up yeah. early. Every day. You got. You would never get up early Monday Now, I think Rocky and Bullwinkle holds up to this day. I've watched it recently. Like, not today, mm -hmm. but – in the oh, past, yeah, it's got like some, three months. Yeah, it's got some classic stuff in there. And it's it's pretty Looney funny. Tunes classic. It's pretty funny. Yeah, it is. And uh, we enjoyed it. We were fine watching it. It was our start to the morning, kickoff yep. to Saturday morning cartoons. And then from there, it just split off into little things. Could have been the Karate Kid cartoon, the uh, some cartoon called Kissy Fur. We used to watch about two circus bears that escaped. Um, Winnie shirt the, Tales. The, the shirt Tales, the New Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, Alvin and the Chipmunks, Mr. T., you know, uh, it was various ones, but we'd switch uh, Smurfs. You'd switch from channel to channel because you had three options and you had to pick. And everything one. was there was something different. No, yeah, there was something for everyone. They weren't counter programming, trying to put. Uh, you didn't put Super Friends against uh, Spider Man as Amazing Friends. They were almost mm -hmm. like at different time blocks. Yeah. Everyone had their own little shuffle, cartoon shuffle. Yep. And this is kind of weird, but they would make announcements of their new cartoon slate coming out in magazines and comic books. Comics, comics the, were the big thing. Yeah, comics. Had, and I love, when I was reading some old 80s comic books, they were talking about, check out the 85 season for Saturday mornings on ABC. I was like, yes, I will. That's why I, I read. I was more interested in the ads than it was the comic book. And, you know, funny <laughs> you say that. I read, when I bought a lot of old books, I could have bought trade paperbacks and got it a lot cheaper. But I wanted to, A, smell the books because I'm a weird I like love that, that smell. Like, I, think I love that old comic or something. The kind of sour smell, yeah. And uh, Which maybe is our affection for Brandon. <laughs> and two is uh, the ads. Like you talked about the hostess pies were, I you love know, that. I love Batman that fools a bank robber because yep. they ate a peach pie. Yeah. All I remember is Sp the only person I seem to remember is Spider Man. Oh, no. Dude. Saving people. Aquaman I, I, I know, I know did it. everyone everybody, did. Everybody. Everybody. Everybody got their run. Yeah. But it seems like maybe maybe I just read more Spider Man as a kid. I don't know. But it seemed like uh, Spider Man was always defeating them. But yeah, every superhero. But I that in the, uh, the Saturday morning block of cartoons coming this year Punky Brewster. Yeah, Punky Brewster. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they, and they'd have them all, and they tell you the lineup. What what starting at seven and moving on to seven thirty? Yeah, and ABC would have a a one ABC, page plan. NBC. Yeah, and CBS and would have a blog. We would go through there and compare what's going on and say, okay, this is what we're going to watch. And this Muppet is Babies. Oh, we watched the heck out of some Muppet Babies. Man, I love Muppet Babies. Now, toward the late eighties, the ten o'clock ten thirty spot became uh, things like Say by the Bell. California Dreams. I thought was it, Say by the Bell came on at like eleven or twelve. 
No. Football kicked off at 11. So it was 10 or 10. Really? Well, okay. Maybe, maybe where you were at. But football took over at 11. And we were done by 10.30. Huh. Now, I remember at 10 o'clock, there was a like a kid's safari about animals game show or whatever. Yeah, it was very boring. I had to that so out. 10, 10, 30. We or the kinda, animated book of the week. Something like that. Uh, that would be one of them. the Saturday Night that's, Spooky Special? That's when everything at that time block became educational. In yeah. Some way. It went from like... Yeah, the 10, 10 o'clock slot, you were basically done. If you were watching something at 10, 30, you were just lazy. But you had to be gone because I remember 11 o'clock... What time o'clock, did Pee Wee's Big Adventure come on? Was that Saturdays? Yeah. Then it came on probably later. Well, not Pee Wee's Playhouse. Excuse me. Pee Wee's Playhouse. Playhouse. You know, never, never liked that show. Really? Growing up, thought it was too weird. Didn't understand it. Bailed on it. Uh, but but my my uh, buddy across the street, that was his favorite show. But me, I was like, that's stupid. It I was, don't remember what I watched. It was instead. almost like a, a, a like a variety show for kids. It was, yeah, and it had zany, crazy characters. That's what people watched it. Oh yeah. But for me, I was like, it was. It's, he screams a lot. It's stupid. I don't care what the password is today, or whatever. And everyone scream. Yeah, you know. It wasn't for me. But no, you 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 enjoyed it. Well, obviously not after you just destroyed it. Oh, Thank goodness. you for burning my toys. Hey, like oddly, enough, though, oddly enough, we love the movies. Love the movies. Big Top Pee Wee was great. Uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure, excellent. Yeah, Pee Wee's Big Adventure is a masterpiece. Solid, solid. Uh, Big Top Pee Wee is pretty good, too. Um, not as good as Pee Wee's Big Adventure. I need to Adventure, that. But still enjoyable. Very enjoyable. Um, Benicio Del Toro as the dog man, <laughs> which is great. Um, but yeah, later, wasn't he a Wolfman too? A Wolfman, I guess that's what he was. Well, he was a Wolfman in the Wolfman movie. Oh, oh, oh! In oh, the nineties, he, he was typecast. Um, in the nineties, playing wolf characters or dog characters, I think he was the Dog Boy or something like that. Either way, either Maybe way, he could be the voice of Ms. Lion in the Amazing Spider-Man's <laughs> Amazing Friends. <laughs> he did the barks. Yeah, like George Clooney provided Kinda like the Vin wolves Diesel for Sparky. Was, uh, for a uh, Groot. There you go. So, yeah. Um, but anyway, that's either Saturday there, morning blocks of cartoons. But how those excited are, we were. Yeah. Everything that, was a little different. That was a fun time. Um, I remember when cartoons didn't feel as special on Saturday mornings for me. Uh, probably when I was hitting mid teens or 16, especially. I think I was mowing lawns at that point. I think a lot of it changed to more of live action type Mighty Morphin Power Rangers were entering the scene and a lot less of um, it just started shifting drastically it was not so driven yeah. by like toys and merchandising yeah quite the degree it was in yeah. the 80s boom of that yeah Pro- yeah Good analogy there. I mean, there was some stuff in the early nineties I thought was good. You know, no, we have already talked about. We talked about some, a lot of, of those. Yeah. yeah, but uh, yeah, it started just kind of fading into obscurity from me, probably mid nineties or so. Uh, and then I do remember though that USA Network brought us the Cartoon USA. Express, mm-hmm. and all it was the Hanna Barbera, all the Hanna Barbera, Pac Man. I used to watch Pac Man too, and all these other and. I was like, wow, this is great. And I'd watch Cartoon Express. Cartoon Express was great. And that was yeah. really what USA was about. I think that cartoon block was their big thing. And then they had the Up All Night with Rhonda. I think USA whatever. was always number one program back then was WWF. USA back then? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Still. They did a lot of they did a lot of cartoons. Oh yeah. Everybody was up all night with Rhonda Shear. Yeah, Rhonda Shear. Oh yeah. I Hello. think I became a man. <laughs> or as close as I could. I was like, wow, this show is terrible, but I can't stop watching Rhonda Shear. There's something I like about her. Two reasons. Just <laughs> her eyes. You're right. Right. Um so They were so double I don't think you even D- know what she looked like. Interesting. <laughs> That's right. I'm double down. There you go. Double doubling down on your love for Rhonda Shear. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, used to watch them up all night. That's where I actually saw a really good movie that can't I, buy me almost, love. No, uh, no, Bill Maher, young Bill Maher, in uh, Piranha Women of the Avocado Jungle of Death. This was on the Saturday morning Samuflage we did. You talked about that silly movie. Yes, it's still good. I did rewatch that. 
a few years back. He said, oh, still holds up. Campy, but funny. That sounds it. There you go. Um, now, uh, but, but then, uh, after Cartoon Network, you had Nickelodeon come out, Cartoon Network come out, and Cartoon Network was my jam. That's where the older Hanna-Barbera... We watched really Cartoon Network at Cards and Coins. Yep. That's where we would watch Super Friends and yep. all the other cartoons. Yeah, and I we love that they had ESPN. all the older stuff. That's true. And even when they started doing their own new cartoons, their first wave, Dexter's Laboratory, uh, Johnny Bravo, love Johnny Bravo. Space Goes Coast to Coast. Space Goes Coast to Coast was a, a constant on the Champ TV, Holy actually. Cow. I, don't think I love we missed Brack. It. Yeah. Oh, you'd sit there and laugh. The whole time. You I tell had me, Space Coast Coast to Coast CD. I would listen to it. It was great. Truck. It was a great show. It was ridiculous. It was a great show. And so we kind of loved, you know, at Cartoon Network was my jam. Nickelodeon. Not really a Nickelodeon fan. Yeah, I never got into like Rugrats and Doug. all of that stuff. Yeah, nothing. Just yeah. didn't didn't speak to me. Yeah, didn't didn't, didn't go for me. I wasn't either. '90s kid enough for that. Yeah, and now then it morphed to where I don't know when exactly. Saturday morning cartoons went away. But they became irrelevant because there are so many other channels. Come up, cable was growing, and there were channels just dedicated to. And when Cartoon Network kind of grew out of the old cartoons, then you had Boomerang, who inherited those cartoons, and and a new channel was created. And I love Boomerang. You know, I was watching that when Megan and I uh, were first married. I was like, oh, does it have? Does the cable package have Boomerang? Because I right. wanted to see some of those old yeah. uh, cartoons. Uh, Heathcliff and you know, Megan like pound puppies that was on there and all this other stuff. So now I don't even know. I don't think Boomerang even plays that stuff anymore. I think I, it's gone to another channel. Maybe I don't know. I know Boomerang. I think it's it's a, it's a separate streaming service now. Oh okay. Well, I know these cartoons have been kind of broken up over time and everything. And there's you know good and bad. We've talked about cartoons before, but uh, today cartoons are everywhere. You can access them anywhere. Any type, like you're watching older cartoons, you can find them. A lot of streaming services carry them. A lot of these are for free. Some of them, a lot of them on YouTube. Uh, my children are a little bit, you know, into the new and old, depending on what we're showing. For a few, few weeks in October, my wife was playing the real Ghostbusters cartoon, which that I watched that before I even saw the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, because we weren't allowed to watch the movie, but we were allowed to watch the cartoon, which I thought was excellent. Is that because your brother was scared of ghosts? Yes. Okay. Yes, it's scared. Thought we had touched on that. Before. And uh, but you know they watched the real Ghostbusters for most of October. You know they watched a new episode, and so they think they can watch a little bit of both. Uh, cartoons today, you know the cartoons my kids are watching are uh, Coco Melon is the devil, as is Little Angel. It's, it's the worst thing in the world. I'd rather watch Barney. Than any any of that other garbage, but um, but now they're we're trying to get them into Bluey. It's a pretty good cartoon, uh, but cartoon. I know who Bluey is. Yeah, Bluey's not bad. Yeah, and I, I and I had mentioned something a long time ago, many years ago, probably over a decade ago, on Saturday morning Sam and Flange, when I said I think cartoons have lost their magic, and I want to retract that comment because. It's probably we're in a better era for cartoons than we ever were because you have access to literally everything. Anything we talked about last week, the Fantastic Four cartoon, the Aquaman cartoon, you can find all this stuff now. Usually streaming for free. Like Tubi, a lot of the free places have some of these shows yep. streaming. You you told me about that yeah, a long G. time I ago. Joe. Yeah, yeah so hey, it's streaming here. Up. Yeah, so virtually now almost anything from our childhood is accessible now, which is great. Not that we need to watch them all, but I definitely want to introduce my kids to some of them, see if they like it. Yeah. Um, but that's awesome that it's so available, and now kids can watch anything. Um, and then they have their parents to say, ah, like me, like, watch some real Ghostbusters. Thank me later. You know, stuff like that. Sure. And I think that's awesome that there's even more access to content. Now, I don't watch a lot. Obviously, we don't watch many new cartoons. I don't know, do you? Can't say I do, no. Yeah, uh, no. I know anime is a big deal. I am not an anime guy. Bruce is. I'm not. And you? I've watched some of it, but yeah, it's just not my... Nothing new. I've never watched anything new uh, of anime. Uh, mine was way, way back in the day when it was only Akira, <laughs> Fist of the North Star, and Vampire Hunter D. Uh, but that's probably all I've watched of anime now to think about because I hated Dragon Ball Z. My, my little brothers were into Dragon Ball Z hugely, and I just thought that was just such an awful... I still think it's a terrible cartoon. Just because it's just not, they're breathing and talking, and then someone else is breathing 
and talking. And then when they charge, they're just still, and the you know there's lights flashing around them. Yeah, it just seemed like it was very Street Fighter to me. Yeah, it, it didn't seem interesting at all. But my brothers watched it religiously. But I know people are pretty dedicated to it. Oh so yes. good for them. Oh yeah, my brothers were just watching that. Um, I, but but. You know, and I, like I said, I don't watch many new stuff. I maybe saw um, uh, Amazon had uh, Invincible. Have you seen Invincible? That's actually worth watching. And season two is coming out soon. Nope. Do you know in, what Invincible is? No. Based off the comic book by Robert Kirkman. No. Please tell us. It's a Superman. It's. I'm oh, no, sorry. It's a. Uh, well, yeah. It's kind of like his version of the Justice League. But what happens when Superman becomes evil? It's not. His name's not Superman, but Superman-like character, hmm. and basically kills the Justice League. And but still hides the fact that he's evil, you know, uh, because he is an alien from another planet. And he's just serving the alien masters to take or conquer the world. It's a different take. It's very interesting. Of course, the animation's done well. Um, other cartoons like that, I probably would give a go, but I haven't. I've, I've watched a lot. You know this. I've rewatched all. Well, not re, not rewatched, but I went through and finally watched the rest of the DCAU. And then even more recently, as of last year, found out about these Flash cartoons that aren't very good. Lobo is amazing just because of how adult it was um, for a Flash cartoon. It's not it's not the best art or animation because it was back when the, you know um, Homestar Runner and um, oh all those you know Adobe Flash cartoons. WB said, "Hey, let's get into the Flash cartoon business," and they did a, a Gotham Girls based off the Batman series, and they hmm. did a. And they, it was just a bunch of little four-minute, five-minute cartoons of them doing stuff. And lo, they did a Lobo series, which was supposed to launch into his own, because you know he'd been introduced in the uh, Superman show, and he was going to get his own series. But man, that was kind of, kind of a little, little PG-13 on that one. That was a really uh, adult. I mean, but of course that's Lobo, right? That's Lobo watered down, actually. But I was like, wow. I mean, the animation wasn't that good, but it was kind of wild to kind of see that. And that, that the, the animation is actually pretty bad. So that's you know. You know, the sound is kind of hollow, um, but interesting to see. Plus, there was a short they did of Batman and Catwoman called Catch Me or Chase or something like that, where Batman is just... So you were saying that you felt like cartoons now... Are probably better only because there's a, as El, El, El Wapo would say, a plethora of cartoons for anyone to enjoy. So you think a plethora is better than a... A limited Suggested amount that you got excited about. Size. Well, yeah, because you can turn. I mean, you, we don't. It it was must see TV back then because VCRs. Come on, did you have VCR? We didn't have VCR, and my mom wasn't going to waste a tape on tape and cartoons back then. So you had to watch it. You had to watch it live. Oh, we had now, VCR, but we still was watching it. Now sure. we watch it whenever we want. And I just think there's a better convenience in it. There's more to pick from. Do you, you think watching, that kids have changed though? I don't know. Give me your thoughts on it. I can be convinced I ju- Well, I, I'm just wondering is, you know, it's that a was parade. our Bring only on access to it. Um, and Which now, made it special. Correct. And you this is what so I argued earlier. Everywhere. It was special back then. It's not special now. But, for and this that was my argument I had. And it is was, it, do they even have cartoons to sell to? something now or cartoons do they cartoons are still selling toys toys. yes and coco melon and peppa pig and i mean it's just it's ramming down your throat for okay that's that's the toy aisles now okay the kitty cartoons got it so they're still selling you a product but see that that's what cartoons evolved into but before us you know it was warner brothers and hannah barbera and there was not like you weren't going to stores and there was not a giant amount of um grape there, there is but for it's for a younger generation it's for a younger generation um so yes it doesn't hit that 10 11 12 spot we're talking the the six and under yeah probably range where they're selling they're definitely selling you toys but boys don't play with toys anymore and they hit the eight nine spot all they want to do is video games that's all they want to do my little nephew I think he's nine or something, and that's all he wants to do is video game, video game, video game. Doesn't want to play a toy. Toy is so. So you feel like we're the four last years ago. generation of that? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I, I, that's when we were talking about this when toys were losing their luster now, right. basically for older collectors or for young little children who are buying the baby stuff, like we talked about. 
Um, <clears throat> but go ahead. Your, your continue your thoughts on well. No, I, I I just I'm getting your thoughts on it based off of you having small children. <clears throat> For for my small kids, what I like now I don't I don't like most of the new stuff. I think Bluey is probably good. You know, I, I've enjoyed some cart episodes. In fact, I've actually called Megan and said, "Watch this episode here. This is actually pretty smart." You know, and I kind of liked it. Um, and I, I, that's something I can tolerate. I can't tolerate anything else they watch. And some things I think I, I think Coco Melon. But do you and have anything? Is there ridiculous. something out there? I mean, I know like SpongeBob was so popular back in the day. That was for my wife. But you can watch that anytime now. But I'm just saying, like, is there something that was like Tom and Jerry for us? No. Is there something where I, there's like this ridiculous amount of? Animated violence and creativity. Oh uh, well, no. I mean, they're not going to do as much violence, obviously. See, that's what I mean. Like everything now is more of an. It, but didn't always have to have violence. I mean, like Garfield and Friends was a great show. No, I agree. I've watched Garfield and Friends recently. Yeah. Actually, does it hold up? Not bad. Okay. All right. Uh, I remember yeah. loving that. I f- I forgot that the. Is it the duck that's wearing the inner tube on its body? Yes. And everything it does, the duck head on the inner tube does the same thing while it's Yeah, happening. when he turns his head, the duck that's head turns pretty, his head. That's pretty funny. Yeah, no. Yeah. That was the barn animals, right? The yeah, I think Garfield and, and Friends may be the most underrated cartoon of our time. Oh, yeah, that was a good one. Megan loves Garfield and Friends. That may but be th- our closing question. But the thing is, though, yeah, well, we can ask them later on that. But the thing is, though, now if I want to access Garfield and Friends and show it to the kids, I can. Sure. So and peacock. Some 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 things take, some don't. Uh, like real Ghostbusters took off for October. My wife was happy because Ghost for Halloween and stuff. And the kids were every morning they wanted to watch another real Ghostbusters. That was fun. That was fun. You know, it that cartoon does not hold up. But I'm glad that they had fun watching it. And I still th- it's just an awesome opening and closing and everything. Thought it was great. Uh, but you can always but I can access any of this stuff to show them what this is what Daddy used to watch. And they're already interested. Oh, Daddy, you watched this when you were a little boy? Yeah. And they're all automatically See, tuned you know, I, I, when, when you watched cartoons when you were a kid, was there anything that your parents ever said? Like, I remember my dad had a Yogi the Bear uh, like coffee mug from when he was a kid that he still had it as an adult, but he didn't drink coffee out of it. It was just like something. It was like one of the last things. Okay. That he had, but like I can't remember them ever saying, "Oh, I used to watch this when I was a kid." So I don't know the, how prevalent cartoons were at that point. Only thing Dad told me about that he watched when he was a kid was Looney Tunes. Looney Tunes was the best to him. That was the best cartoon ever. There shouldn't be any other cartoons. We love Looney Tunes too. Right. Back in the day, we always watched it. But Dad thought those were the best because that was the stuff that Dad watched when he was a kid. And those hold up, man. Those sure. are great. Also, I would say that the old school Tom and Jerry, nothing will ever beat that. Animation wise, it's beautiful. There's a lot of different Tom and Jerry runs. Oh boy, did they get reboot after reboot after reboot? Certain ones are way better than others yeah yeah but the classic one just the best it's just the best it still looks great and everything um but th- that, that that's the thing though if we want to turn them on to tom and jerry done all this stuff is easily to be found now and i just i love that i love that because i mean the 90s we th- we lived off of the Cartoon Network, Boomerang. Yeah, it's the only way you could watch those old shows. Right. And then when I got a DVR, I remember physically taping, I can't remember what cartoon it was, like, shut up, that cartoon's coming back. So I'd tape some of the episodes of it. And I'd enjoy it again. Oh, the Tick cartoon. Maybe that was it. Tick cartoon. Great cartoon. Forgotten. Classic. You know, still funny. Yeah, I think it missed its audience somehow. Yeah, st- still funny, though. Funny as all get out. But the thing is, though, they can, I mean, they, they probably wouldn't like that as much, but you know, stuff stuff like that that I could play for them, and they would enjoy. So it's almost, I'm changing up, because yes, it was a special moment. Saturday mornings was something you always looked forward to as a kid. Coming home from school, you always look for that Disney afternoon, right? There's always basically two cartoons. Well, you know, some people at Disney, like, I can remember that was when Transformers, it was yep. Heathcliff, Transformers, G.I. Joe, in some order on that on WGN. Mm-hmm. 
And there were other, you know, Mask. We watched Mask yep. back in the day. And then, like you said, you had DuckTales and all that. DuckTales, we watched Rescue Rangers, uh, everything. Tailspin, uh, Darkwing Duck. That's where we stopped. I stopped at Goof Troop. I was not going to watch something called Goof Troop after Darkwing Duck. Uh, but, uh, but, but they, they, you know, that was an exciting thing to come home from school and you sat down and you watch your two cartoons and then you go out and play until it was time to eat. Or you had to do your homework. Or you had to do your homework, most likely. And then, um, but then, but then the Saturday morning was your special time because I wasn't interested in football back then, any sport. So, I mean, pff, oh boy, here comes dad and, you know, to watch football. Okay, I'm out. You know, you can watch boring football. While yeah, I, I can go. remember being so upset when like the cubs or braves were playing and car- they interrupted on cartoons coming on in the afternoon <laughs> oh yeah yeah the cubs on wgn yeah, yeah gotta play the cubs playing a day game you got it which they played a lot of day games back then yeah. so cut into a lot of ca- cartoon time but yeah I, that, that's 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 how i felt but it, it meant a lot to us but it means more to me now that the convenience is there and that we can watch all these. You're always watching. This is the most pro you've been on anything I've ever done a podcast with you about. Well, yeah. I know. I changed my mind on it, like I said. Because back then, I'm almost positive I said that, oh, no, no, no. The the magic's gone and whatnot. And, Do you but like but you're to be fair, it? digital wasn't as big back then. The streaming wasn't Correct. as big. Yeah, so that, streaming was... I think that was the difference. That's the difference maker. Okay. Because back when you had to so buy stuff on... convenience for you right now is what makes it so enjoyable. Yeah, because when you had to buy everything on DVD, that's still not special. Yeah. I mean, it's nice to get, but it's very expensive, a hobby to do. And I did buy a lot of that stuff on DVD back in the day. Well, not a lot, but some of it on DVD. Yeah. I bought all the DC Animated Universe stuff. And um, But, you know, I was like, oh, man, you can't collect all that. Like, I'd love to have the old collection of Voltron and Thundercats was coming up. I was like, I can't pay that much. Right. You know? for all that so you kind of let it go but now everything is online basically a lot of it's on youtube for free too some of the random oddball ones that you'll never see come out is on i can't think i not, not i i didn't watch the show but denver the last dinosaur you know you can watch stuff like that or you know insert random you know just these uh, cartoons that just no one sees anymore what was the cartoon of the kid who turned into a car you remember this oh i know it was on cartoon it. express I can't. That was his thing. Remember, his his face would stretch out in a car and everything. It was a super. It was like a kid transformer or whatever. And you remember it though. I'm glad you remember it. Idiot now. (laughs) What are you really embarrassed that you don't know? Yeah, I don't know. We're supposed to be experts here on this. Oh no! These are random, unknown uh, cartoons like uh, robotics um, and stuff like that. That's just you know random. That was a toy line. Yeah, everything everything was a toy line back in the, back in the eighties. But yeah, Silverhawks, you know, it you was love Silverhawks. Back in the day, it was right on par with Thundercats, and now Thundercats is in everyone's T-shirt, and Silverhawks are gone. Silverhawks had one year. That's one amazing season. to think about because it meant so I much. I watched to me something when, about that recently. It's so weird because it feels like it meant a lot to me more back then. Now, I mean, I didn't keep up to see. You know, cartoons had a short shelf life, too, and I didn't realize that. I think that, yeah, it was almost like if it got a good toy line, it got a second year. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's true, too. Toys dro- drove it. Um, and toys really drove. I think someone uh, uh, someone wrote a biography about, you know, writing, his, and he started off writing for the Mask cartoon. He said mm-hmm. he hated it because they said, hey, remember when Hondo lost his truck and got a new truck? Now, why do we have to write an episode about this? He went, because we're coming out with a new truck from him. So write an episode where his old truck explodes or something, and he gets this new truck. Okay. It was all about write this to sell this toy. Like the Transformer movie, killing off all the original off Transformers. The originals to introduce the new ones to sell a new wave of toys. it completely killed them. It backfired franchise. on the franchise. Yeah. That's a good point there. Yeah. We talked about this when we talked about the mm-hmm. Transformers movie. But that's all it was. He said there was no art in it. There was no effort. All they wanted you was to sell the toy. Just sell it whatever stupid reason. Just sell And he tried to add story to it, but they didn't care. Just market the toy. 22-minute um, commercial. Commercial. That's all they wanted. So you see, he was kind of miserable on that show. And I was like, oh, right. I was hoping you'd say something better because it was one of my favorite TV shows back in the day. But... That, that's that's what I'm talking about. So yes, it was magical back then. Yes, it was super special. Now you can say it's not as special, but I I take that I'll take convenience because you can still access, and I'm thankful that you can still access all these cartoons 
just about. I, I, there's very few cartoons that are unaccessible these days. What I miss the most about watching old cartoons, like if I'm just watching it on a streaming service, and this sounds silly, but mm. and, but if I can watch it on YouTube and they have the original commercials. Watch a little Burger King commercials in between your cartoons. Yeah, no, yeah. Or candy bars or cereal or anything. It just adds the whole feel of it rather than just banging through a 22-minute episode. Right, right. I don't know if anyone does that. I, it's brother, on there. They're on there. Oh, really? Yeah. All commercials. Yeah. I know some YouTube has some. Yeah, yeah. Uh, That's what I'm saying. Like, you can find some of it on YouTube. Oh, yeah, you can find a list of all the old commercials. Yeah, that's great, too. But put inserting them in between. Yeah, where they've done it, they went through, because, like, they'll show an old cartoon, in it, but you can see, like, where they've Well, it goes and fades back and then comes back. Well, they highlighted off the Boomerang logo at the bottom, but Mm -hmm. it goes into, like, a Honeycombs commercial. Huh. Fine. So there's a labor of love out there, obviously. That's nice. Creator-driven. Because I, you know, we aren't the only two people that go, "Hey, this is good, but it needs this, and that's what." That's the magic. There you go. It's also got to sell me other toys too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There's <laughs> that an can't get their own toy line. Barbie and her Ferrari, and then there's my body and He Man. Yeah, all uh, that stuff. A remote control car. Sure. Yeah. 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 All the things that you can't sell us in a cartoon: bikes and stuff like that, yeah. board games. You know, the new Candyland. Toys R Us commercials. Yes, exactly. There you go. That's the final touch. So what's the final question? I forgot already. What cartoon is the... What cartoon is the one that everybody misses? Like like, like we say Garfield and Friends was this awesome cartoon that's very underrated. What does everybody else say Hey, this is something that we don't talk about, but man, Kid Video was my favorite cartoon. I loved Kid Video. Or Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. Something that just. And you can say Muppet Babies, but I mean, Muppet Babies was huge. Smurfs was huge. Yeah. Like something that maybe had a one or two year run that you go, oh, yeah, that was great. Yeah. There you go. We'll even accept the answer of GoBots. Yeah, all 22 of you guys, we need your feedback. <laughs> All right, there. There you go, folks. All right, we'll see you next time on Princes of the Universe.